Hey, friends. So, I've got a bunch of thoughts coming through today. It kind of a kind of a collision um, of a number of different insights, little snippets of wisdom that have come my way. Um, I woke up this morning and, and, and I have a meditation app called Insight Timer, which apparently is one that a lot of people use. And it's great. And the quote that showed up today, there's always a quote at the beginning of the day, like a quote of the day. And today was Jack Cornfield, And he says, much of spiritual life is self-acceptance, maybe all of it. And I, that sort of dropped into my awareness at exactly the right moment, because I had been rereading a book called Erzählende Affen, which means storytelling apes or storytelling monkeys about humans as a narrative species, as a species whose meaning and ultimately essentially our reality is defined by the stories we tell ourselves and tell others about life. Stories create our reality and it's a it's a really wonderful kind of in-depth um, surprising and detailed investigation of all the different ways that stories influence us. And most just yesterday, I was re I was at the part where they're talking about how fascism, light, fun-filled topic for a Sunday morning, fascism is a is often achieved by getting people to project their self-doubt outward onto some sort of projection surface. And then they go through a, a kind of a, a really um, well-reasoned and well-argued description of why that why that has the result of ultimately fascism is all about the enemy. Fascism is, ne fascism is about an in-group, but the in-group is really only defined by its enemy. Which there's no construction, there's no building, there's no actual vision of the future for fascism. It's always about destroying the enemy. And, it's, and that's because the point of fascism is to have an external projection surface for our internal self-doubts, fears, right? Lack of self-worth, all these things. It, it, it's a, it's a, it's like a shortcut to taking those dark energies, those things that, that shadow material and, and having a place to put it outside of ourselves. It can be very compelling if we're not if we're not willing to do the work of self acceptance, to do the sitting with self doubt, fear, feelings of of in, of low self worth, whatever whatever our particular cocktail of shadow material happens to be. If we're not willing to sit with it, then some then then all of a sudden fascism or you know shades of that type of um, ideology become compelling to us because they give us somewhere to put that energy and we don't have to look at ourselves too deeply. And, and so then, so that's why Jack Cornfield's quote, which showed up this morning, felt like such a, you know, little perfect, um, gong like a ding just kind of rung because it reminded me spiritual work is about self-acceptance maybe all of it and and then I had this interesting experience of doing some doing my yoga practice leaning into my body doing some stretching and I and I realized as I was stretching into um an uncomfortable area 
I have, there's a kind of outer band of tension on my on my legs and if I sort of turn my foot in and lean over you know sometimes I do it sitting on the ground I'll I'll really feel this it's called it's the gallbladder channel basically and I, I know this remember this from my qigong work the gallbladder channel tends to get tight on me so I so I like to open it up but as I was doing that I recognized that this physical work, the act of physically stretching my body is ultimately a work of self-acceptance. On one level, on a superficial level, it feels like there's a barrier, right? The, if the barrier is the tension within me, then pushing through the barrier or stretching the barrier is the work. But that's not actually true. The actual work is accepting that the tension is there. Being willing to be conscious of the tension that's there. Because that's how ultimately it gets relieved. It doesn't get, tension does not get relieved by stretching. And if my my former Qigong teacher, Chris Chappell, used to, used to rail against the idea that, because in Qigong, you don't do a lot of stretching. You don't do a lot of physical, long, plain flexibility work. You do integrity work, tensegrity work, joint opening, strength, finding, finding strength and support in the body in all the different ways it might need to be. And, and, the, and the result of that is greatly increased flexibility, but we don't do it by stretching the muscles. And, and, and this, and so this morning I had kind of like a visual or a visceral experience of that. I, I kind of just saw, oh, right. Stretching doesn't make us more flexible. Being conscious of the tension in our body makes us more flexible. And, and that is an act of self-acceptance. It's, it's feeling something that's there and letting it be there. Same thing, meditation is the same. We don't, if, if we go to war with the, 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 with the mental tension, with the thoughts that are in our mind, with the monkey mind, running mind, if we go to war with that, or if we try to stop that, we're dead in the water, forget it. That you will lose that battle. There's no way we can stop our mind by, by trying to do so. All we can do is accept what's in the mind right now, which allow, which is this almost the same thing as saying being conscious of it, because consciousness holds that. Consciousness can, can experience whatever's going on in the mind without needing to change anything. That will inherently allow things in their own time to kind of start to discharge, start to dissolve, start to not be necessary anymore. But that, but that notion that self-acceptance is actually what's what's happening when we're doing a physical practice, or any practice, um, a, or 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 working with something like self-doubt, shadow material, really felt as it, it kind of like it like zinged me this morning. I was like, oh wow, that's really that's that's a you know way to way to go, Jack Cornfield nailed it. <laughs> Much of spiritual work is self-acceptance. Maybe all of it. Yep. Quite possibly all of it. Um, and interestingly, I had just had a lesson this past Friday with my piano teacher, Madeline, and we were talking about... Uh, she, she, she mentioned the Japanese practice of Kyudo, which is archery. Um, and I can't remember the name of the man who's currently like the the bow master of this of this tradition. I think it's a long, long lineage. Um, but it's archery as a practice of letting go of the goal of hitting the target. So you practice archery you're shooting a bow and arrow at a target but the practice is not to 
be the best at hitting the target or or get or or even necessarily get better at hitting the target, although that will be the result. The practice is to let go in the moment of execution, in the moment of action, let go of the intention to hit the target. Now that is another level of practice, right? And I, I'm starting to see this on piano too. Like I'm starting to notice, you know, we all kind of know, like if you, you kind of know that feeling of like, when you, sometimes when you just don't care about what's, what comes out of the instrument, you play much better, right? Now, would that happen if you'd never practiced piano? Well, no, probably not. You need the base, you need some kind of practice. You need to be working with the material. But somehow we get it, we get it twisted somewhere along the way to the point where our intention to make good music or to play well becomes the obstacle to doing so. And and I know, I've noticed this, you know, I'm, the work I'm doing right now, I've, I've felt myself have little moments of, of completely letting go of needing to do something well or needing to do it fast or needing to execute the passage perfectly or, you know, whatever. I just kind of like go into the practice and I, and I, and there's a, there's a, there's a looseness that happens. There's a lightness that happens in my hands and in my whole body. And all of a sudden I get a little glimpse of what I've watched, you know, true virtuoso pianists do where it's like, they're playing this piece. These They're playing, you know, hundreds of notes, if probably, probably sometimes thousands of notes a minute, right? F notes are flying out of the piano. But there's almost no tension. There's almost no resistance. It, it, it all, it all, it looks quite easy. And there's something in the letting go of the desire to, to do that. That's part of, that's part of it. That's part of ultimately doing it. That's part of the practice. So, like I said, there's a lot of things kind of colliding in my awareness today. Um, but they all feel related and they all feel like they're, they're an, an, an enriching um, batch of ideas to take me into my Sunday.
That's where I'm at today, folks. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you. If you enjoyed my post yesterday in German, let me know. I'm going to be doing more of those. Not necessarily because I'm looking for a German audience, but because it's a great practice for me. And because, as I said yesterday, it speaking that language brings me into a different layer of my own personality. Um, and I'll make sure they have subtitles. I figured out how to do that. So even if you speak English, check out the German posts. There's going to be interesting content there that may not come through another way. So anyway, have a great day. See you soon.